Our study was the first to investigate the effect of corn with high expression of alpha amylase in, uh, in the form of silage in grain in lactating cows. There are uh, more studies in lactating cows, uh, but they have focused on silage. And there have been a couple of studies testing this corn and beef cattle before, but ours was likely the, the one of the first one to measure and est or, or estimate ruminal starch digestibility and microbial protein synthesis. Hi, I'm Bill Weiss, host of the Dairy Nutrition Black Belt Podcast. My guest today is Dr. Lucas Rabello. He got his PhD from OSU, Ohio State. When, when I was there, we crossed paths a little bit. His PhD was on amino acid metabolism in dairy cows, and he now works for Adiseo, providing technical support for the Eastern U.S. Uh, Lucas, uh, good to see you again. Welcome to the Black Belt. It's a pleasure to be here, Dr. Weiss. We're going to talk about a paper you, you published. I don't think this was directly part of your PhD, but you did it while, while at OSU, and that was on uh, this antigen corn. Uh, a trial with dairy cows. Can you kind of explain what, what the trial was about or why did you do this experiment? So our study was the first to investigate the effect of corn with high expression of alpha amylase in, uh, in the form of silage in grain in lactating cows. There are uh, more studies in lactating cows, uh, but they have focused on silage. And there have been a couple of studies testing this corn and beef cattle before, but ours was likely the, the one of the first one to measure and est or, or estimate ruminal starch digestibility and microbial protein synthesis. And, and we wanted to see um, how that would affect uh, lactation performance. And in, in big pictures, we don't go in too much detail, but what, was the, what were the treatments? Yeah, so we had three, three, three treatments in this trial. The first one was the control, which uh, among the other feed ingredients received corn silage and corn grain from a regular corn hybrid. In our second treatment, we replaced the regular corn silage with the corn silage containing the high expression of alpha amylase uh, gene. And, um, and in, in the second treatment, we maintained the regular corn grain. So the only thing that changed was the silage. Uh, but in the third treatment, we not only um, had the high amylase corn silage, but we also included the amylase rich corn grain. <laughs> Adiseo, a global leader in nutritional solutions and the provider of Smart Amine M, the best in-class rumen-protected methionine product for dairy producers who want to optimize milk production, capture more value from their components, and maintain the lifetime performance of their herds. For more product information and to calculate your return on investment when you balance your feed with amino acids, go to MilkPay.com. And, and all treatments were about equal in, in starch, it's just the source of starch is starch buried. As similar as we could on the starch across diets, about 30, 30% starch. Yeah. I want to talk more about, uh, the, the, the more detailed stuff you measured, but starting off on production, what, what basic production responses did you see? Yeah. So we found that the energy and corn silage treatment increased dry matter intake by about 1.6 kilos. It increased milk yield in about 3.4 kilos and milk protein yield as well by about 130 grams compared to the control. Um, and again, it's the, that's the energy and corn silage treatment versus control. And, and yeah, those, those would be the major paper I could, uh, results. That was with the corn silage only. So did, did you get an added benefit when you had both the corn grain and the silage with the amylase trait? Yeah. So. Unfortunately, that, that was part of our hypothesis. We thought that uh, the third treatment uh, with the androgen grain was going to be um, further improved production. But we did have an issue in, with particle sizes uh, of the grains. And, and that was 
probably the reason why the grain of the this this amylase grain compared to the regular corn grain uh it was more coarse um so it, that was probably the reason why we didn't find um, a better result as compared to control uh this third treatment compared to control so i i assume your process them the same so is this just a trait of that corn that we will have to grind it finer than than typical to get a get a smaller particle size yeah a good question uh, bill but it's it's hard to say uh we ground this corn we passed it through the roller mills if i remember correct, correctly the space between rows standard used in the osu feed mill is 700 microns and so we just pass the both of the corn grains through the same process and and then we but we got different results okay. uh, it might have I, I don't know if it has something to do with the field that you was planted or what it was the storage but um if if that's the case i, I would probably try to decrease the, the space between rows to make it um, more head to head comparison and perhaps, um, you know, uh, avoid this influence just because of particle size. And and you said that you, you this was one of the only or maybe the only study where you measured microbial pro the effect of this trait on microbial protein synthesis. What, what did you find? Uh, in regards to the microbial protein synthesis? Yeah, yeah. Starch, it, this was an interesting result because we thought there, there's going to be improvement in starch digestibility within the rumen, a total uh, considering a 24-hour period, but we didn't find statistical differences for those variables. But we did find an improvement to microbial protein. It, it, it's hard, it was hard to explain because an improvement to starch di digestibility um, starch digestibility in the rumen would have been the, the major variable to explain improvement in microbial protein. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so no starch digestibility in the rumen, but about 80, a statistical difference of a improvement in about 85, 80, 82 grams of microbial protein for the energy and corn salad treatment versus control. And uh, that would have been yielding, assuming uh, 80% digestibility of microbial protein, um, mm -hmm. 66 gram of metabolizable uh, microbial true protein. So there, there's some contribution there to the total. It, it can be significant. And we also found improvement in microbial efficiency as well. Um, it was a small difference, but there was um, efficiency, which is efficiency of synthesis of protein compared to the, the total organic, ma uh, organic matter degraded in the room. And so, so this, this trait may do both affect energy availability and, and it may modify protein metabolism. Yeah, we, we have, we have, a, we have a hypothesis for why this could have happened in regards to how it can, it was actually affecting microbial protein synthesis. We, we discussed that in paper. But it's just a hypothesis. It needs to be tested to uh, to be certain. But yeah, it could have been related to the readiness or uh, the accessibility to the starch granules or, or its derivatives as opposed to uh, a total starch digestion throughout 24 hours. Well, thanks. I, lear I learned a lot today. Thanks for, thanks for joining us. Yeah, thank you.